What do you yeah, think are the most common mistakes people make in their beginnings? Let's start maybe with linear versus nonlinear. Okay, well, I would say that even before, like linear versus nonlinear is definitely a huge topic. Uh, and, but I would say that even before that, people make a lot of wrong assumptions. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question first, I would say that I've read somewhere in one of Nathan's books, but I don't recall the title. I always promise myself to keep it at hand because I mention it a lot, but I, I never do it because I'm lazy, I guess. But in one of those books, they, they, they say that at least 90% of all FEA done worldwide, if I uh, remember the, the number, um, is actually done in linear FEA. And I strongly suspect that most of it shouldn't be. The thing is that uh, if you don't know how to do a nonlinear FEA, it's better to do linear than do nothing, most likely. And it's also seeing the safety factors and you know the engineer, how engineering is done in general. Uh, the linear often works. It's not a, I don't want to say proper solution because like it works, right? Like you can be a very good experienced engineer during linear FEA. And even though you are analyzing nonlinear problems in a linear way, you're so experienced and you have such a big understanding of it that you can kind of make sense of the outcomes you get, right? But it's not a general advice, something like, oh, you're new, do linear FEA, you'll be fine. This is not how it works. Like it's actually more difficult to do a linear calculations of a nonlinear problem that makes sense than do nonlinear calculations because like in nonlinear this happens like solver does the work in linear you have to do the solvers work and things things through it's much more complicated this way uh, so obviously people too often uh, assume that the problem can be simplified to a linear problem and while in many cases that's okay like the most common question I would get from my subscribers when they have something to ask would be something like, I got 700 megapascals of stress in my steel structure. Is it acceptable? Like, because I know it's not real. It must be an FEA mistake or something like that. So that, that would be a classical, uh, okay, you, you most likely can use linear analysis and most likely the outcome is okay, but you just don't understand enough to make sense out of it. So uh, when it comes to linear versus nonlinear, that would be one definitely stability so people especially those who didn't study civil engineering struggle with stability problems because in civil engineering you have buckling you have like lateral torsional buckling like people after civil engineering they have a few courses in steel structures and they kind of knew what stability is in many different mechanical studies this is not a subject like if you're designing an engine on, a, on your course, like there is no buckling there, right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, when you go to work and you actually have to design a gantry crane, for instance, like the buckling can be a problem. And then you, you're you defenseless against it. So that would be another linear, nonlinear phenomenon because there is a linear buckling analysis, nonlinear buckling analysis, so it gets complicated. However, I also feel that linear, nonlinear definition, the, the choice you make is not the most fundamental choice of FEA. I would say that people much more struggle with boundary conditions. Nobody teaches how to support your model. Like, because it's, it, it depends, like how, do, how would you imagine a book that like in 300 pages, this tells you how you're supposed to support your particular problem, right? Like it, it would be too hard. You need to understand how things work and put a lot of thought into it mm -hmm. and analyze it deeply. So uh, I, th I think that this is why the, the gummy bear post I did on, on my blog about structural rigidity and what it means that things are more or less rigid in, in sense of su support is so popular because it's, it's kind of hard to, to explain that without using funny examples or differential equations. And since I'm lousy with differential equations, I need to use gummy bears. Like, you know, everybody, everybody deserves something. So in my case, that, that would be gummy bears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that that would be the boundary conditions and that would be a bigger struggle, at the especially at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what I'm afraid most is people who think they know how to do it while they don't. Mm -hmm. Because like, you know, after you define this explicit super crash test analysis and you feel like the master of the world, right? You instantly assume that you know the fundamentals because mathematics work this way. Like if I can solve this super huge differential equation, this automatically means I know how to add, I know how to multiply. It's kind of inherited, right? In FEA, it doesn't work this way. Like you can solve a super complex analysis of a very wrongly defined problem. And then the outcomes are bad, but people think that 
since I can do the complex analysis, I know how to do the basics. And that, mm. that, that's, that, that would be one of the biggest issues. Mm.